Hi, Steve Cooper, Rank Success, and welcome back to another broadcast uh, in relation to all things promotion. For those of you who are listening in who aspire to promotion to Sergeant, Inspector and Chief Inspector ranks in the UK and other police services. Um, today we're going to be covering, or I'm going to be talking about, the role of a Sergeant or aspects of the role of a Sergeant uh, and the functions and dimensions of the role of a Sergeant. Why? Uh, because it's an area that is um, really important in relation to trying to communicate to a promotion panel or board your potential, uh, what you can do, what you will do, and that's based on a level, a depth and breadth of your knowledge about the role. So that's what this is going to be covering. Um, if those of you are tuned in thinking, well, okay, very nice, I'd like to listen to it, but the time pressures are on, or I want to hit the ground running, then of course, as usual, I'll remind you at the outset of this um, broadcast that you can uh, download uh, supportive resources uh, digital toolkit for bespoke for sergeant together with a four-hour promotion masterclass uh, or for inspector and chief inspector you can download a bespoke digital guide toolkit uh, together with the masterclass to help you hit the ground running and get prepared for your promotion opportunity okay so for those of you who are, are listening in I'm going to continue with this um, the role of a sergeant then and um, why am I talking about the role of a sergeant because I've alluded to it before but uh, I've had a busy period um, uh, I've had a bit of a time, time off but I had a really busy period a really kind of full-on period and one of the things I do as a coach is I will ask people going for promotion would you just describe to me just as promotion board would do um, or may do and often do um, would you just describe to us your understanding of the role that you're going for so whether that's sergeant inspector chief inspector if you don't get asked that question you should be anticipating that question uh, because what you're doing is you're holding up a mirror to what to yourself about what you do or don't know about the role that you're going for so where are you going to get that information from well you can get it from lots of places you can get it from uh, the promotion uh, instructions and materials uh, that you are provided with by your force as part of a uh, promotion selection process however that may only be certain parts certain elements of the sergeant's role uh, you may well be going for a specific role, so some forces advertise custody sergeant's roles, um, detective sergeant's roles, and you can you know, tick the box, the option as to whether if you get through a promotion board, you want to be considered for those posts, those roles. And they may well have different functions, different essential skills, um, desirable skills, and the functions that you're required to uh, carry out, if you like, in that role, uh, are um, things that you can cover things that you can research, things that you can anticipate, things that you can prepare for. And there's the magic word, the, the, you know, the klaxon should go off, the kind of ding, 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 the, the bell should go off. Preparation is the name of the game. And so if you're going for a promotion board, and I know lots and lots of you have just got through your exams, now is the time, right now, to start thinking about what the role of a sergeant is, because you may well be lucky enough to have done some acting or temporary sergeants, uh, duties you may well be lucky enough to have someone who's really supportive uh, and caring about you in terms of um, helping you uh, succeed in your promotion aspirations you may even have some support from your force laid on to help you prepare for promotion and that's all very interesting um, make use of all the support you can get from everywhere but come back to it and ask at the end of the day. So, at the end of the day, what's the role of a sergeant? How am I going to describe it? And if you just ask that to yourself and imagine the board have just said, good morning, uh, come in, sit down, first question, nice and easy, would you please describe to us your understanding of the role of a sergeant? Or uh, alternative versions, lots of different versions of that question. Um, could you please just um, share with us your understanding of the difference between the role of a sergeant and a constable? So there's lots of different ways you can be asked that question but if you've prepared for it, um, it's a hell of a lot easier. It's really easy to start talking about it once you've done some, some reading, some background um, preparation for it. Because if you don't know the role that you're going for, it's going to be very hard for you to be proactive verbally in your own interests in something like a promotion board uh, or panel. Uh, or conversation or even scenarios so you know role-based scenarios where if you know the functions and, and a summary of the uh, the sergeant's role and the key areas that a sergeant is responsible for you can actually include that 
uh, and, and actually tell that, you know, reflect it, trumpet it if you like to the board. Well, look, the key part of the sergeant's role, uh, in my view, in my summation, is decision making and supervision. And then proceed to kind of drill down into those areas and relate them to your examples or what you would do, what you will do if it's a forward facing question. Okay, so just rewinding things, taking things back a step now, deep breath, and uh, well, for me to have a deep breath actually, have a deep breath and just think about what is the role of a sergeant? Stunningly simple question. And yet when I ask it, uh, in terms of supporting people, perhaps on a mock board, or sometimes on a telephone conversation where they bring me, or I've gone out to their house. So, I mean, um, I've kind of, <laughs> careful what I say, but I've, I've been out to people's houses, I've, I've met them on Skype, I've been out to um, railway stations, hotel foyers, garden centres, uh, and, and met officers who are aspiring for promotion who want to have a conversation about it. One of the first things I'll do to identify where they are in terms of preparation is that nice and easy question. Okay, should we just take things easy? Here's a question. Um, tell me about the role of a sergeant. Tell me what your understanding of it is. And people will do their very best to have a go at it, but generally it ends up being waffle after about 10, 15 seconds, or they'll talk about a narrow perspective of the role and keep going with that. So let's just say decision-making. Um, or uh, looking after the team or well-being. And what I want to do with this presentation is get you into the, the kind of zone, if you like, of, of taking two steps forward and really looking at the role from left to right or top down or through a, a number of points around the sergeant's role or a mnemonic uh, and also through other literature, other material. I refer people uh, and, and customers to lots of different ways in which they can look at that issue about the role of a sergeant. The same for inspector, and I'll do a separate video for this uh, for inspectors and chief inspectors, but you know, aspiring uh, inspectors and chief inspectors. But you know, trying to refine and distill what the role is about sounds really um, easy, uh, but when you're on that hot seat, when you're on that chair and you're trying to talk about it, you can actually, you know, you have a mental block. Whereas if you work into a mnemonic or that you've prepared yourself, it doesn't have to be anything that I've suggested. But Anybody who's downloaded my uh, digital science toolkit and you can go and have a look at the testimonials on my page and what they say about it, what their experience was, how it made their um, promotion interview um, or board a lot easier. Um, it's something you can read about and you can read lots and lots of different people's ways of how that's worked. So I cover this unsurprisingly in my digital toolkits which you can download straight away and I'll also address it and go through the key points and functions in, in, in more detail in my promotion um, masterclass video. So that's a four hour video that you can download um, with me suited, booted and uh, serious head on and talking to you about all things promotion and kind of leading you through and um, you know, uh, respectfully supporting, challenging and provoking your thinking around issues and topics around promotion of which the role of a sergeant is just one. Even though you're going for that, that's one question it's one aspect of your preparation. There's lots of other areas uh, and I've done various other videos around that and podcasts. And, uh, you know, for those that are keen, for those of you that are listening who just think, well, okay, I think I like what I'm hearing, um, go and have a look at ranksuccess.co.uk, have a look at what's on offer, uh, look at the free YouTube videos, look at the free podcasts, look at the free downloadable guides. There's more free stuff than you can shake a stick out there to help you to help you get started and to make an informed decision as to whether you'd like to kind of hit the ground running, uh, get serious about it uh, and make a commitment to yourself to, to, to do it properly. Um, there's lots of people who come uh, to me who have, have gone for boards before, perhaps they didn't know that Rank Success existed, perhaps they didn't know that lots of that information was free um, for them uh, and you know, so they come to me having um, been unsuccessful once before, twice before, three, you name it, up to 12 times before. And just imagine for a moment the uh, the emotional commitment with that over, you know, perhaps eight to 10 years, 12 processes. Um, it happens, it doesn't have to happen. And if we wind things right back to the beginning of it, it's about understanding the role that you're going for from a number of different perspectives so that you can come back and get asked the question and you can speak for five minutes it's generally how long you've got on a promotion well five or six minutes uh, around responding to that aspect uh, of um, what the board or the panel want to hear about and what they want to know about is what do you know about the role that you've got uh, that you're going for so if we 
try and have a look at this first and foremost. There's lots and lots of definitions around things. So, you know, where you're going to look for the role, the role could be in job descriptions, it could be in your promotion literature, it could be all over the place. Um, you can go and have a look and find lots of roles on your HR department for ROC, for sergeants, uh, and you'll probably end up with a lot of information. So what I try and help you do is distill it and refine it uh, in, the, in the promotion guides. And I've got some notes here um, with me. Um, I like lots of quotes, I have a look for it. So start at the beginning, what's role? What does it all mean? What's the actual uh, meaning of the role? And if you look at the freedictionary.com, um, it says role, the behavior pattern that an individual presents to others. So you can immediately grab that, you know, the behavior pattern that an individual presents to others. I quite like that, that's why it features in my uh, toolkit. And the reason I like that is because, you know, the behavior pattern that an individual presents to others so that's that individual that we're talking about here is a sergeant so what behavior pattern are you going to be displaying to others so as a sergeant first and foremost you're going to get assessed on the instead of running around in the spotlight as you're trying to do now and get promoted when you're successful that spotlight gets turned off and da da it gets turned on to a group of people your team and you'll get assessed on that so hence lots of questions around performance around leadership for people performance and change discipline, decision-making, um, briefing, all those aspects of a sergeant's role and which you can anticipate promotion questions uh, and sometimes ta tasks and scenarios in, in psychometric tests, in um, role-play scenarios. You can anticipate them if you start thinking about them now and I always encourage you to do that and give yourself as much time as you can to get that run up uh, and part of that is, is becoming familiar with the role that you're going for. So most jobs have a role description and essential skills, but it helps tremendously if you can talk with authority about the role that you're applying for. So we're talking about, you know, you being able to communicate with authority about the role that you're going for. Nothing less, really. Um, so the framework guidance, depending which framework you, you are looking at or operating to, but historically, you know, framework guidance states that a sergeant must first be a competent constable and that an inspector must first be a competent sergeant. So why is this relevant? It's relevant because it's a potential question that you can anticipate on a promotion board. Uh, and as I said before, it's as stunningly simple as, could you just tell us about the role? And that's an open invite for you to spend five minutes communicating what you do know and what you've learned about it. So how does a sergeant behave differently to a constable? There'll probably be a lot of similarities in there, but there will be some key bespoke differences which you can pick up and uh, focus on. So um, another kind of um, thing I try and do is get you to try and think about it in a nutshell. So have you got a short version to describe the sergeant's role? And then we can talk about perhaps some, a longer version of it uh, which you can communicate and articulate your knowledge uh, a little bit more. So one of the nutshell versions that I've picked up about the role of a sergeant is to set, communicate and reinforce standards in the organisation. So that's quite a broad brush, short nutshell description of a sergeant's role. And uh, you know, when I look at that, to set, communicate and reinforce standards in the organization, although there's so many different sergeant's roles and positions and duties, um, I kind of cast my mind back to uh, you know, the Roman army uh, as such, where you know, if you had an optio uh, or a centurion, uh, so a very, very distant but military kind of um, sergeant inspector kind of analogy there um, but an optio or a centurion can go anywhere in the Roman Empire and perform the duties of an optio or a centurion so for a sergeant that to set communicate and reinforce standards in the organization is something I, I quite like as a nutshell description so have a think about that because it's always good to kind of you can slip that in so using that verbally proactively in uh, in, a, in an interview you can say well look for me you know the short version of the sergeant's role is to set to communicate and to reinforce standards in the organization uh, and so that you can then talk about standards of investigation you can talk about whatever you want to talk about but you've summarized a short version of it there um, if you don't like that and it doesn't sit with you then you know by all means work, work up your own but I've kind of borrowed that from some of the policing literature that's about and in my toolkits I try and save you all the work so I try and distill and refine and make sure there's lots of links to useful resources um, including some of my blogs where I go into topics in depth, including the sergeant's role, 
uh, and other aspects. So if you ask anybody, any of your colleagues what that is, you know, try doing it, try doing it. But the most important person to be able to answer that question is yourself. So you've got a great opportunity right now to do this work uh, so that you can actually answer the question. But more importantly, you're developing your awareness, your understanding and your, your confidence around being able to talk about the role you're going for. And in my experience, having done this now for six, seven years, again and again and again and again and again i mean you get the message there people fall at the first fence like the grand national with something so simple as that would you please describe the role that you're going for to us and you know having a, a little stab at it having a little attempt at it is okay when you're talking to me or a friend or a colleague or a loved one but on a promotion board you've literally got to bat it out the park demonstrate and communicate that you know what it's all about and what you will do when you're promoted so there's a slight difference there around, you know, energy, enthusiasm, um, focus, you know, uh, you conveying your motivation, your determination through it. And they can see that by the depth and the, uh, the breadth of work that you've gone into to try and do this. So let's start getting down into some of the um, aspects of, uh, of, of the sergeant's role. And again, this is my interpretation of it. Um, I, I don't present the full... Um, the full spectrum if you like there are lots of things that people can come in and say oh but what about this what about that what about the other what about a <laughs> um so i try and condense uh, and distill and refine the functions for you to pick up and run with and you can add lib you can add on you can do bolt-ons you can do what you want with it but you've actually got all the work done for you uh, in terms of um, supporting and provoking um your thinking around this issue around this topic so i'm just going to put my specs on again as i say i need to do that now uh, after a while um so if again if you look at some of the literature around uh, some of the guidance so the policing professional framework uh, used to say that a sergeant must be able to conduct intelligence driven briefing tasking and debriefing okay prepare monitor and maintain law enforcement operations supervise the response to critical incidents supervise investigations and investigators manage your own resources and to provide leadership for your team so what i quite like is you can go back in time you can grab things from the policing professional framework uh, you can shoot forward to other forces descriptions of the role of a sergeant you can look at the cvf description of the role of a sergeant and go onto the college of policing's website and have a look and see what they say there's a whole load of gump on there around what sergeants do um, but what you've got to be able to to do is bring it all together and talk about it so trying to keep it as i say distilled and refined a short version of it something that you are happy to talk about and communicate uh, is one of the things that for you to think about now so that's something that i've kind of imported uh, and would prompt you to think about now each of those are like drop down menus because you should be able to say something about conduct intelligence driven briefing tasking and debriefing first question i'll say to you is how do you do that now or how will you do that as a new newly promoted sergeant that just gets you to think back to okay that's one of my duties to conduct intelligence driven briefing tasking and debriefing how do i do that because briefing is a key part of a sergeant's role and that's something for you to hold that space to think through to work through start making some notes just sit back and reflect from how do i actually brief why do i why do i even bother briefing how do i brief do i use any particular models okay and what's the point of all that so there's some issues there around accountability around communication around health and safety around risk mitigation and well-being and looking after your team so each of these little headers is so to prepare monitor and maintain law enforcement operations well depending on what role you're in you may well need to do that supervise the response to critical incidents there's a magic word supervise supervision now is supervision one word or is it two well it's both in the context of preparing for a promotion um, interview or board because if you just think around that issue for a minute supervision sergeants supervise policing activity delivery of policing services the management of resources um, and activity within the station so supervision what does that mean for you to you for your teams uh, and is it two words or one so supervise yeah 
I'm super I'm a, I'm a supervisor I'm going to supervise but supervision supervision just having that ability to see a little bit further ahead to think a little bit further ahead just around the corner because that's what they want from sergeants is that ability to think to think ahead and to supervise and kind of anticipate and plan for things that can reasonably be expected to go wrong and right and react accordingly um, so you see what I'm doing here there's just a little list I've grabbed of sergeants functions here from the policing professional framework um, old money old language now because the competency and values framework is in for most UK police forces um, uh, supervise investigations and investigators well you know you're doing that you don't need me to tell you you're doing that your job as a sergeant newly promoted sergeant is to supervise investigations and super and investigators so how are you going to do it that is an absolute golden area for performance again part of your role leadership for people um, change and performance so when you're looking at performance that's a key area it often crops up in peel reports have a look on my uh, rank success youtube channel you may well find your forces recent peel report summarized into a nice little video for you to start um, looking at and and uh, you know preparing your understanding around but often one of the crit criticisms one of the performance feedback areas uh, is standards of investigation standards of investigation consistent consistency investigation plans um, victim contact plans victim updates you know it's a repetitive consistent thing and it was when i was in the service as well you know standards of investigations why because the effective investigation of crime drives public confidence it's one of the drivers of public confidence so again supervised investigation investigators there's a whole area of um, work around that authorized professional practice so core investigative doctrine how you as police officers investigate but for a promotion board thinking through it through the lens of a um, sergeant how are you going to do it because there's a whole drop down menu there in relation to how you will ensure standards uh, whether you understand the process of investigation from instigation uh, initial investigation investigative evaluation as a key decision point uh, right through evidential evaluation as a key decision point as a sergeant through to court and getting the idea that everybody is involved in that process even though you may only be involved in a little bit of it so again appeal reports looking at the policing professional framework there's lots and lots of resources that i try and condense in my toolkits and on my youtube video free youtube videos and and podcasts uh, for you to kind of pick up and think through and to work through and to reflect on so that you're developing your awareness and your confidence um, so that's just a, a very short one there there's a lot of information there to suggest to digest so you'll what you'll probably do is end up getting a big piece of a3 card or a4 paper and start making some notes on my promotion masterclass video the first thing i say to you uh, to customers uh, is go and get yourself three sharp pencils uh, an eraser and a brand new exercise book don't bring anything else any prior knowledge any notes any folders with you sit down watch the video enjoy the masterclass and then come back to the beginning what did you learn new write it down and people actually say they've nearly filled up their book of aha moments you know reflection ideas filling gaps they never knew anything about like this around the role and doing some more comprehensive work uh, around key areas that you can then be proactive verbally uh, you know and mentally on on the front foot if you like in communicating to a board what you do know and what you will do and how you'll do it and why you'll do it so all these things are all linked to the values uh, and to the competencies and to the role of a sergeant so again deep breath step back from that one of the things that i um i i do in the in the digital toolkits uh, and in the exclusive guide that i provide with my four hour masterclass uh, is i connect officers with um, helpful meaningful useful resources that may they may never ever have come across and i do all that work i mean i'm a bit of an anorak i love doing it um and i put that and keep the guides updated i work off a master digital copy so i just update that so that whatever version you're buying generally almost always you're buying the current version uh, and if by any fluke you ever find up you are uh, you're in possession of an older one that will literally just be a crossover period and i'm more than happy to kind of um 
uh, supply you with it. So uh, the role of a sergeant, another way of doing it is around some points. So I try and condense that down for you into seven points. There's also a mnemonic, which you'll find in the uh, promotion interview guide. So, you know, the toolkit is yours, how you choose to prepare. We're all different how we choose to prepare, how we learn, how we grow, how we develop. Um, but the resources are there, the same information is there, however you choose to absorb it. So the role of a sergeant for me is uh, is trying to put together those functions and dimensions. So now I'm just going to go through some of them now, you know, briefing and administration. So oral and written communication, uh, both vehicles for supervisory leadership um, and good communication and trust are linked. So the ability to deliver formal and informal briefings is a requirement of the role. Well, APP alludes to two formal methods of briefing for police officers. There's actually quite a few. There's a handful that you could use. Which ones are you using now? Because when I speak to officers, um, I said, well, we use an agenda-driven um, tasking model. Uh, we use a, a list of bullet points or we do virtual briefings. And that's good. We open up a conversation with But what I'm after is how do you how will you, as a newly promoted sergeant, ensure that you are communicating and driving, briefing and, and fulfilling your administrative uh, responsibilities? So point one, briefing and administration is part of it. I explain these key areas in my in my toolkits. Um, discipline and ethics. So, you know, policing is still a disciplined organisation. You, you borrow the rank insignia from the military over history. Uh, it serves police well, it serves policing well and has done for years, but there is also an aspect of discipline around that. So sergeants are responsible for discipline, whether some of them think they are or not, they are, and they're responsible for discipline uh, of a team and behavior and for bringing things to attention and to implement other processes uh, where necessary to maintain discipline and order in the organization. Um, underpinning that is ethics and that's, that's a whole area that you can look into but as a role model of professional standards your character qualities honesty respect for others integrity and fairness become the standard by which others judge their own actions so sergeants are very much a role model and expected to role model the behaviors in the organization um, ethics is a body of moral principles or values and knowing what is right being totally committed to it and doing it underpins ethical supervision um, the code of ethics is there at the heart of the NDM. It's there, and again, here's a learning point for me: is when I ask officers, "Could you please describe to me what you know about the code of ethics?" Well, most of the time, people have to go away and think about it a little bit more, refresh their memory, unsurprisingly, and to sit down and draw out the key points that are relevant to them as a sergeant leading a team and role modelling those behaviours. So, discipline and ethics is is, is a point. Um, Providing leadership for people, performance and change. Really important, so three key areas. So leadership's a vast, vast, massive area of research and activity. So in context, it's about you as a sergeant leading a team of people or teams of people, individuals. Uh, and to, to bring that into context, there are three areas in which you're leading, in short, people, performance and change. So three bespoke areas there, three definite areas that you need to look at and again i've kind of distilled those in the guide um for supervision and training there's that word supervision again uh, and it's paired with training uh, sergeants are responsible for training it's often overlooked often forgotten never mentioned uh in preparation certainly not not mentioned very often uh in um promotion mock interviews that i do so bringing those elements in you know you're responsible for supervision and training um is important so whether that's um, NCALT uh, making sure that everybody in your organization are doing that whether it's classroom training whether it's informal training but making sure that you know whether it's demonstrating as a sergeant the right way to do things you know it's part of your role it's expected and it's something you can be proactive with in terms of how you will do that um, managing your resources as a sergeant you get to control a team the resources that go with that again when I speak to people I say tell me about the resources you expect to kind of inherit or be able to use or uh, allocate um, and they'll often talk about things like manpower people as resources and there's no opening up of it to you know money time people um, equipment there's, there's lots of areas around resources you can talk about but managing resources and then the other thing is CPD and I've done other um, I've done blogs about the killer question on promotion boards CPD um, 
and how important, just how important CPD is to the point where I ask people to tell me uh, in terms of preparing for the promotion, well, tell me about your CPD, what are you doing at the moment? And it's like, well, what does it look like? Well, I've got, got it up here or I've agreed with my supervisor, it's a list, little list of bullet points. Okay, what are you doing to develop other people? That's just as important because leaders uh, 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 take responsibility for um, learning and growth and development of other people in CPD. It's a massive area, have a look at it. I've blogged about it and I, I uh, allude to the uh, importance of it unsurprisingly in here. And welfare and well-being. again, I've done some free CVF um, some videos on, on well-being around CVF and the sergeant's role on YouTube, but welfare and well-being, massive areas, obviously connected, overlapping, two sides of the same coin or the same coin there, but again, a whole load of stuff for you to think about because that's part of the sergeant's role. And last but no, no means least, decision-making is a key function and dimension of any leader, really. What people want, if you look at research all around the world from team leaders, is a decision-maker. Make a decision please even if it's the wrong one give us a decision so refining and understanding your ability that you are a decision maker you're expected to, to make decisions that's what those stripes signify is you're the decision maker um so become comfortable with it research it look at when you've done your most challenging uh, uh, or complex decision think it through work it through use the ndm to do that again i've alluded in lots of videos to that um but you'll almost definitely be asked about how you make decisions or give us an example of when you have made a decision. You know, and don't forget to answer or answer the question. You've got to do that, although you're responding. I like to encourage people to respond to any questions. Um, but answer the question. So if it's give us an example of a difficult or challenging decision you've made, ensure that you give an example of a decision you've made in whatever context you want to do it but explain and include why it was difficult or why you found it challenging. Um, those are often the elements that, that are overlooked or left out. So again, practicing all this beforehand is really important, valuable work. So having a look, uh, have a look at my guide, have a look at other resources that I indicate to anything else you can find on College of Policing's website, but throw the net wide bring it in and have a look at what have we got in the net now. Have we got some really valuable information here? So one of the things that I alluded to earlier on was um, on my promotion masterclass, if you download that as a um, high definition uh, uh, video, uh, you can download it to your iPad, um, to your phone, uh, any device really. And in there, I also point you towards other resources and links. And what I would say is, you know, don't just go to the UK, go elsewhere. There's lots of information around the world about what makes good sergeants. Uh, and one of the resources I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes talking about now that I really like, uh, that, that you'll find in the uh, exclusive guide in the um, with the masterclass, is um, something written by a, an, an American uh, former chief of police 25 years ago. But these aspects and these principles, the role of a sergeant holds true, even though some of the language, some of the organisational capacity and rules and regulations and um, uh, people's understanding that changes over those times. So language, terminology, the principles are still embedded there. They always have been. And that's why I like to go to books, to media, and to find other people who have written and shared their experiences. So, you know, I love the way this one starts. Most police officers vividly remember their first sergeant. They may remember the individual as the, their best supervisor or their worst. Or perhaps they remember him or her as someone who fell into the chasm that lies between. So I quite like that. But... Um, it, it's quite a fair uh, resource it goes into unfortunately many sergeants never receive any formal training well I looked on the strategic policing review uh, report a while back and uh, I think that alludes to superintendents not getting the training they require so this is 25 years old uh, and you look back and think well occasionally people do some forces do give training some forces don't some sergeants are expected to learn as they go along make mistakes and and pick things up um, generally sergeants have not been given the training with with exceptions uh, that they require and he alludes here to the knock-on effects of that for an organization and ultimately for the public um, many sergeants don't think that they're part of the management team and in some cases police managers do not treat them as such there's a whole thing there do you think as a sergeant you're part of the management team yes or no well it depends and does it depend on whether you're included as part of the management team by SMT and senior leaders? 
I think that's a little bit of the dated part and I think perhaps Silence Are You may disagree with me but I think they are now in relation to that but I like this paragraph it's the sergeant who defines service delivery more accurately consistently and personally than any other member of the department it is the sergeant who transmits the values the standards and the culture to the men and women under their supervision it is the sergeant who has the most immediate and personal contact with the public and finally it's the sergeant who based on job knowledge and experience directs the day-to-day -day, daily work of their teams and their officers the sergeant's position demands strong leadership self-confidence competence management skills and above all an understanding of their influence upon their team and their officers and individuals and the work of the department so this is a, a you know it's quite a um, Americanized kind of um, summary of it but you can start to see some of those pillars those standards those principles those values uh, and the description of that it's hard to disagree with that um, and then he talks very much around the personal qualities and I'll just quickly go through some of them so yes you've got the CVF competency six of them and four values um, and you know if you're in another force like Angarda Sikona you'll have your, your own values so different forces experiment and rebrand the CVF or include or incorporate uh, different values to those that are espoused um, so go and have a look at what other forces do as well so you can develop broaden your understanding of it so knowledge the primary personal quality of a great sergeant is knowledge so developing your CPD and your knowledge self-discipline that's a hint at emotional awareness and intelligence good sergeants understand that to control others and influence them they must control themselves emotionally uh, physically and intellectually and wise sergeants will understand the influence that they have on their team um, creating an empowering environment is one that sergeants should focus upon doing um, adaptability duty so you don't find that very very much loyalty well there's a whole conversation we could have around that but you certainly don't see it as an explicit um, um, personal quality highlighted on UK uh, force literature fun the great sergeant makes coming to work a fun enjoyable challenging and learning experience often overlooked but if I was a um, well-prepared candidate I'd be talking about that as well so creating an empowering environment supportive and one that was fun um, it's almost like you can't have a conversation around that today so what does fun mean to you um, and it's obviously linked very much there to being enjoyable challenging and learning um, motivation a great sergeant can't always motivate others but they can establish an environment in which people can feel motivated uh, and and flourish um, fairness well we can talk about that all day long um, attitude attitude is everything uh, and I quite like this line you know the great sergeant in short is trying to be a better person in addition to being a better police officer and first line supervisor uh, they cover leadership I've talked about that before that's unsurprisingly there um, but I quite like the ending uh, of it, it which is um, the most important yardstick by which to judge sergeants may not be how well they develop they help the organization reach its objectives but how well they help their subordinates develop into great police officers I quite like that there um, and there's some really contentious stuff in there that, you know you can get into if you like but basically they talk about there's, there's one quote which I use provocatively and supportively when I'm working with uh, coaches um, the primary loyalty of the sergeant lies with the organization the secondary loyalty of the organization is to those under their command that often provokes quite a lot of discussion he's right he's right on that uh, he's not wrong but there's a whole load of discussion that goes on that's really interesting with that um, okay so that's a, a bit of a, a bit of a jaunt if you like through the side role. so there's lots of different ways just to recap that you can think about it but think about it you should you must uh, so that you can actually communicate and articulate what you believe the role is about that you're actually asking to be promoted into uh, and being able to do that through some different parameters is, is very helpful being able to do it with confidence is, is, is useful so whether you remember it as a mnemonic which you'll find in my guides uh, or a list of seven key functions and bullet points which again you'll find in my, in my guides or whether you want to kind of broaden your search a bit 
and have a look at the exclusive guide that comes with the promotion masterclass and the content of the guides and the masterclass uh, or anywhere else you want to uh, college of policing uh, and books and literature on it um, please just do the work so that when you do sit down on that chair and they do say to you uh, the question you know tell us about the role of a sergeant or what can you tell us about the role of a sergeant you can answer it with some degree of confidence and here's the most important thing even if they don't ask you um, the question you can be verbally proactive in your own interests by injecting all these little elements these ingredients these components or elements of the sergeant's role into your responses into your answers into your examples and your evidence um, okay well I will be back with another video um, shortly and uh, until then Take care and stay safe.